Hello everybody, today I'm going to share with you this really nice old dual 20 watt preheat fluorescent shop light. Now I have a video of this already on my channel, but I made it many, many years ago. So I decided to make a more up-to-date video on this fixture. Not much has changed, although I can't remember if in the last video I changed it to the ballasts in this fixture or not. But uh, they do have newer ballasts in them. The older ballasts were just fine, but I decided to update them for whatever reason. It is still preheat, and the ballasts are of top quality. So uh, we'll take a look at that in this video as well. But first, I got this fixture a long time ago from a very nice neighbor of ours. And um, here it is. Uh, it's fantastic, and uh, I have another one of these which I featured in a different video made by a different company. This one is unique, however, because it has the starter sockets coming out of the sides. Plus, another unique thing about this shop light is that there's not many that I have been able to find, either on the internet or, well, in person I've seen two, and I have both of them, but um, preheat 20-watt two-foot fluorescent shop lights. Usually it's the four-foot ones which take, you know, the... Uh, F40 T12 fluorescent tubes. I don't see many of the two-foot industrial shop light versions out there. So these must be pretty rare because, well, I haven't seen many of them. I've only seen two ever, and the two that I've seen are ones that I have. So enough talking about a uh, little history and how I got this fixture and why I think it's neat. Let's go ahead and take a look at it itself, other than just this one picture here. So we definitely have a sticker here on the side that we can look at. We can see Mitchell fluorescent unit. There's its model number. It's 50 watts. They're accounting for the ballast loss there. Of course, we have two 20 watt tubes, which equal 40 watts, but then they're adding in the ballast loss as well. Made in the USA. Boy, is that a nice thing to see. Anyway, we have the starter sockets here. It originally had um, different starters in this, but I replaced it with these really cool Leviton uh, transparent green starters, so you can see them turning on. There's the sticker again. We have nothing else on this side. On the opposite side, we have the starter for the other bulb, and the switch as well. On the end, we have where the cord comes out. That's not the original cord, by the way, it's a replacement. And the other end we have a additional knockout. Now this fixture originally had different chains on it, but I've since lost those and uh, installed these, which are the same on that other 20 watt preheat industrial shop light that I've shown. Um, so they're both equal. But anyway, that's a quick look around the outside of the fixture. Let's go ahead and take a look at the inside here. We can see our dual 20 watt tubes here with very nice black sockets as well. So uh, these tubes are not original. Um, when I got this fixture I gave the tubes to our uh, neighbor as she can use them for something else so I went out and got my own tubes. They're both the exact same. These are GE Daylight um, tubes. They're both like I said the same thing, but we'll take a look at this one anyway. They're the Ecolux versions. So, now that we have that out, before we take the um, reflector off, let's go ahead and take a look at how it's curved. We can see here we have more of a curve to the reflector, whereas the other one that I've shown, uh, it's more of a straight down um, type of reflector rather than a curve. Like this one is curved, the other one is more straight. Curved and straight. So two different versions I have here. Again, it looks really cool with these um, starter sockets on the side here. That's very unique. Anyway, now we can finally get into opening this fixture up. It's quite easy, just like the other one. We unscrew these wing nuts for easy access. We have a washer here as well. Just take those off. Same thing on the other side. Of 
There we go, and another washer. And we can lift it right up and off. So here is the inside of the fixture. This originally had some General Electric ballasts of the same design, except it, it was stamped, you know, GE, and then some just basic information. But I decided to upgrade them to the Sylvania potted ballasts. Of course, there's not many um, like that around. Usually they're the non-potted versions. But the GEs were potted, so I decided to put the same thing back in here again. One of the reasons that I think I replaced them, I still have the original ballasts, but it was because the uh, fabric wires are starting to get very frail around the uh, parts where they go into the ballast. So instead of risking some type of a short, I just decided to switch out the ballasts. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the insides here. We can see a little bit of original wiring with the uh, white and black wires here. That is original. I can't remember if this other wire is or not. The just black stuff. Probably isn't. We have a Leviton switch. I really like these Leviton switches. They don't have a hard pull, so it's really easy to pull the switch. But we'll take a better look at the ballast when we flip it around here. Again, we can see the two fluorescent starter sockets. Again, in matching black for the sockets. So here's the information about the ballasts. We can see they run a variety of different bulbs. These are very nice, high-quality ballasts. I don't even think uh, Sylvania or Osram even makes these anymore. But maybe you can find them out there. Very nice, high quality. We can see here some uh, vibration absorption washers so the ballast doesn't vibrate on the fixture to keep it nice and silent. Very nice design there. Let's go ahead and set it down. Let me flip it around so we have the um, cord on the correct side for when we turn this thing on. But there we have another overview of the fixture. So let's go ahead and put the reflector back on. It doesn't matter what way it goes on. I always try to even it out on the ends before tightening it down. Of course, it's nice and easy, toolless design to get to the inside. However, once you're in there to uh, replace anything, you'll need a screwdriver. Again, just put on the washer and this here. I think this reflector is on backwards because of the uh, where the washers, the old place there where they sat. But um, I'll flip it around later. So let's go ahead and put our bulbs back in. Okay, doesn't really want to stay in there. There we go. And I'll now uh, undo our cord here so we can plug it in. It's probably already on, just like the other one. Yep. So, let's go ahead and... Jeez, I always lose that little remote. We'll turn off our main lights, and the camera can't focus on anything for some reason. Come on. There we go, that's better. So let me get the chain out here. We'll try to lift it up so you can see one of the starters here. Very nice. Not too blink happy, but it definitely is cool to see the starters working. One more time. Very, very cool. Well built, awesome old fluorescent preheat two foot shop light. These things are really cool. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this look at this nice old two foot preheat fluorescent shop light. And also, please comment, rate, and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching.